physicsninja.org. Okay, now I want to apply Gauss's law to a different case. In this case, I'm going to look at a charged conductor. And again, we're looking at spherical symmetric objects. So I'm going to have a spherically symmetric piece of metal uh, with a charge Q. So let me draw that conductor. Let's give it a radius, a size. It's going to have a radius A. And I'm going to give it some charge Q. So the one thing to know about conductors, if you put some charge on it, those charges are free to move. And what's going to happen with the conductor is all those charges are going to reside at the surface. Okay. So we're going to have a bunch of charge. And if it's you have a spherical object, uh, the charge will be right at the surface of the conductor, kind of uniformly distributed on the surface. Okay, let's apply Gauss's law to this problem. We want to find the field inside the conductor and also outside the conductor. So, uh, for inside the conductor, What you want to do is you want to apply a Gaussian surface that is inside the conductor. That makes sense. So we can place it anywhere. Uh, let's place it kind of closer to the outer edge here. There's my Gaussian surface S. And I'm going to apply Gauss's law to this problem. So let's start with the left-hand side of Gauss's law. Again, it's the same kind of problem as before. Since I have a spherically symmetric object, it's going to look exactly like the point charge. So E times the surface area of the sphere. Well, what is the radius? Here I'm going to give it a radius R. Right? And that's not necessarily the radius of the conductor. Right? It could be smaller if I'm looking at the field at a region that's closer to the center. OK, so there's the left-hand side of Gauss's law. And that has to be equal to the right-hand side of Gauss's law. Well, how much charge is enclosed? Well, we just said if I put a charge Q on the conductor, it resides on this external surface, on the outside surface. So therefore, the charge that's enclosed is zero over epsilon zero. So the only way you can have this equation satisfied is if the electric field inside the conductor is equal to zero. Okay. All right, case number two is what about outside? How do you apply Gauss's law to a point outside the surface of the conductor? Well, again, you want to basically put a Gaussian surface on the outside of the conductor. So let's go ahead and place a spherical Gaussian surface. Our surface should always have the same symmetry as the object. Um, that makes it a lot easier to simplify this expression. All right, so here's surface outside the conductor. Let's evaluate the left-hand side of Gauss's law. Again, I have a spherically symmetric object. The left-hand side of Gauss's law is always the same. Now, the radius for this Gaussian surface is the outside one, right? Okay. And now, well, that has to be equal to the right-hand side of Gauss's law. So how much charge is enclosed by this blue surface over here? Well, it's the total charge that I put on the, on the conducting surface over here. So that's Q. And divided by epsilon zero. Again, if you isolate for uh, the electric field, what you find is 4 pi epsilon 0 divided by r squared. It's kind of a remarkable result. So the field inside the conductor is 0. Uh, the field at the surface of the conductor is q divided by 4 pi epsilon times a. And as you go farther away from the surface of the conductor, it drops off as 1 over r squared. So if you were going to actually just sketch what the electric field magnitude looks like as a function of distance r, 
And this is what you would get. So you would get zero all the way until the radius is actually the radius of uh, the conducting sphere. So you'd get a line like this, zero here. And when you're outside this conducting sphere, you get something that falls off as 1 over r squared. So outside the conductor, the field produced by this finite size object looked ex looks exactly like that of the point charge, where all the charge is located at the center. It's kind of a remarkable result. Okay. Physics Ninja. Dot org.